Hopefully you've already watched my video on hypothesis tests for a proportion. Uh, that has a lot more details than this video, so you're going to have to watch that one first if you haven't already. Um, when we do a hypothesis test for a mean, there's a couple things we have to remember. First of all, details that we learned about the sampling distribution of X bar, the mean of the X bars, the standard deviation of the X bars, and when the X bars follow a normal distribution or approximately a normal distribution. And then we had a formula for turning a value of X bar into a Z score by subtracting the mean and dividing it by the standard deviation. And also remember, sometimes in this form of the Z score formula, sometimes instead of this sigma, we have to use S, the sample standard deviation. And when we do that, this quantity gives us T instead of Z. And the other thing that we should recap is the steps to doing a hypothesis test. Writing a pair of hypotheses, collecting evidence, determining the strength of the evidence, which is our p-value, and making a decision based on that p-value. So here's an example. Trying to verify that 12 ounce cans of Diet Coke actually contain an average of 12 ounces of Diet Coke. We have a random sample of 40 cans that contains an average of 12.04 ounces, standard deviation 0.164 ounces. Is this convincing evidence that the average contents of all 12 ounce cans of Diet Coke is not 12 ounces? So our hypotheses are written in terms of mu now, the population mean. The population mean is claimed to be 12, and we're trying to see if there's evidence that it's not equal to 12. So what is our evidence that it's not equal to 12? Well, we have a sample mean of 12.04 with standard deviation 164. Sample size of 40, degrees of freedom 39. And using our formula from above, we turn all of this into a value of T, 1.54. Next step is to turn that 1.54 into a probability. The probability of getting an X bar this big or bigger is the probability of a T bigger than 1.54, which is 0 0.06, 0 0.065, multiplied by 2 because this is a two-tailed test, and we get 0.1316. So the p-value is 0.1316. Then make a decision based on that p-value because the p-value is so large. 0.13 is greater than 0 0.05. We fail to reject H0. We do not have enough evidence that the true average contents of all cans of Diet Coke is not 12 ounces. Um, let's take a look at how to do all that on the calculator. So once again, the stat button and arrow over to the test menu. And the second item down is a t-test. So mu subscript 0 is the mean from the null hypothesis, which is 12. Our sample mean is 12.04. Our sample standard deviation is 0.164. Our sample size is 40. And our alternative hypothesis has a not equal to sign. And we calculate. And there's our t of 1.54. And there's our p-value of 0.13. <clears throat> that matches our p-value of 0.13 over here. And so that's how to do the whole procedure on the calculator. So it should feel like the same flow of steps that we had in a hypothesis test for a proportion. The two big differences are that the hypotheses are written in terms of mu, and we're calculating a value of t instead of z, and figuring out the probability associated with that T can be a little bit of a pain if we don't have technology. If you have the calculator, the probability or the p-value is very easy. Um, I'm going to create another video on how to find that p-value using a table.